Hi there, it's Ben Housel here, and here we're going to have a look at how we put this plasma ball inside um, an eyeball. And I've seen this in a music video um, for Little Xan by Cole Bennett, um, and it's in the opening of the Betrayed music video. I'll leave a link to that video down below so you can go look at the original. But basically this tutorial is going to show you how to do the colour correction, the compositing, as well as animating masks so that you can make the effect disappear when the eye blinks, or make it open up, um, as you can see in the second half of this short clip you're seeing here. So let's get started. We'll pause this for the moment, and now we'll come and have a look at the original clips we're going to use. So we've got a close-up of my eye that we're going to use, and then we're also going to use this plasma ball video that I downloaded from the website Pexels. Now the fundamentals of this effect are very simple. We have a very dark background on this plasma ball, and that enables us to really push the contrast, to desaturate or colorize the plasma ball light in the way that we want, and then composite it over the eyeball. So if you're trying to set this up yourself or film something, then you need that heavy contrast between dark and light um, in the video that you're overlaying, because we'll be using some of the blend modes to actually uh, create the composite. And if you're used to working in Photoshop, you may be used to the light and dark and blend modes that you have there. So we'll delete what we have on the timeline here, and we'll start from scratch. So we're gonna grab the clip of my eye down to the timeline, and we'll drop down the volume. We don't need any of the, the volume from this video. Um, and we're also gonna slow this down. So we'll come up to the, the retiming options up here, and we'll just set this to 50%. This video was shot at 60 frames per second, um, so it'll still be smooth even when it's playing at half speed. But it just means that we get a little bit more detail in the blink when we have it play back. So we'll shorten this a little bit so that we're not animating for too long. So we'll start with the eye opening up, and then we'll grab the, the plasma ball video and drop it over the top. So essentially what we've got here is this plasma ball. We'll come to our tools here and we'll grab the blade tool so we can slice this, and then we'll come back to our selection tool and just delete these last two clips. So essentially what we're gonna do is resize this so it's around the same size as the eye, composite it onto that eyeball, um, as well as doing some color corrections um, in the background image. And that's what we'll work on first of all. So actually I'm gonna drop this clip to the back of the timeline there, just so we can see my eye nice and close up. Now you'll remember from the original video that we have this very blue look to the video. So the way I've done that um, is by coming up to the color correction tools and just modifying the exposure, so flattening the image effectively a little bit. So I'm gonna lift up the blacks and lift up the, the mid-tones and drop down the whites. And that's basically kind of flattening out this image a little bit, which will make it a little bit easier to composite things onto it. So we can modify these a little bit later on, um, but this will, will kind of get us started with this flatter kind of image. And then we'll come to our effects across here on the right-hand side. And what we're looking for in here is the color effects we're going to add a colorize effect to this. We'll drag that across, and we're going to change the mapping of the blacks and whites here for this colorize effect to blue and a different tone of blue. So we're basically going for a kind of blue and blue effect here. So we'll remap the blacks um, to a kind of darker blue, and we'll remap the whites to a kind of lighter blue. And we'll increase the intensity here as well so we get a much kind of more monotone blue image. And you can see when we come back to the color correction here, we can modify how that looks in our final image um, in terms of the exposure and how much white and dark we have in the, the kind of overall tone of the image. We're just kind of eyeballing it here now for the moment, but we can refine it later. So we'll pull this clip up above, and with this clip, we're gonna desaturate it and increase the contrast a little bit so there's a little bit more of a contrast before we blend it with the background. So we'll come across to our video with it selected, and we're jumping from the video options to the color correction options. You may already be in there anyway. And first of all, we'll go to the saturation, and we're gonna drop this right down so we get a completely black and white image. And we might colorize this later on, but this is what we're gonna start with. And then we'll come to our exposure options here, and we're gonna drop down the black and increase the white so we get a bit more contrast and we can 
kind of map the midtones to wherever we want, um, depending on what kind of effect we want, and we can play with that. Now, basically, that's the main thing we need to do in terms of color correction for this top image. Once we've done that, uh, then we can go to our video options, and in here we have the blend mode um, for this layer. And essentially, we're going to set this blend mode to lighten. And once that's set to lighten, you'll see that we can see everything um, in the background. Okay, and now we just need to reposition um, this and rescale it so that it fits um, over the eyeball. So we're dealing with something round and we're putting in something round so that makes this whole process a little easier. We're going to come down to our transform options here. So you may see crop there or a different option, but we're going to need the transform options. And then we'll come up and we'll rescale and we'll rescale this down and place it over the eyeball. So we're about halfway through the video here which is fine, so we can place this over the top. And once that's in position, we can press done. And now you can see we have that playing back and we just need to animate that so it matches the slight movement um, of the eye in the video in the background. So in order to do that, um, there's a couple of steps here. We're gonna first of all zoom in. So we'll come into about 200% so we can really see uh, that video and we'll just modify our selection. So I zoomed in to 200% here and I'm using this little red box on the right hand side to center uh, the selection there. So we can also, if we have made this a little bit too big or a bit too small, um, we can come to our transform options here and just scale things up or down uh, if we need to so it's matching the size of the eyeball perfectly. So the process now is to begin adding our keyframes. So with our clip selected for our plasma ball and our layer selected here, we're gonna come up into the viewer and click add new keyframe up here at the top left there. And now we can use the cursor keys on the keyboard to move forwards and backwards one frame at a time. So we'll move back a few frames and we'll move our video now to that new location. Um, and now it will animate um, as the eye moves. So we're going to do this quite roughly to start with. So we're going to move five to 10 frames at a time um, so that we can kind of move through the four or five seconds that we have here a bit more quickly. So we'll move back five or 10 frames and then we'll add a new keyframe. And when we play this through, we'll see where we need to kind of make adjustments um, to match the, the movement. Now one thing you'll find is that as you're moving you might hit uh, some of these guides that want to snap to a particular position. If you hold down the command key it will stop you from snapping to those guides uh, that you may bump into as you're uh, creating your animation. So we'll move back another 10 frames here and then move and add a new keyframe and then we'll keep stepping back. And now you can see we're bumping into that horizontal bar. So we'll hold down the command key to stop that from happening. And we're close to the beginning now. The eye is closing and we'll just find the right spot to finish this off. We don't need to animate it once the eye is closed. So now we'll come back to around two seconds where we first started our animation and we'll move ahead in our edit by five to 10 frames and begin to add the last half of the animation. So with less keyframes, we'll have a smoother motion um, and less chance of any jumpiness, um, but we can, as I said, play this back through and see where we might need to modify things as we go through. So again, the eye is closing here, it opens up again, and we'll just keep matching that motion. And we may need to move our red box just to reframe a little. Okay, so we've reached the end of our, our clip there. So we'll come back to view to fit just to see how this is played through and we'll click on our transform button to unhighlight things and we'll play this through. And for a quick run through, um, we've got 
a reasonable selection there. So now what we can do is as we're modifying this, we don't want to necessarily add too many more keyframes. So we might want to navigate through our keyframes in case we uh, need to make any adjustments. So I would play this through, zoom back into 200%. I would play this through and just look for the spots where it feels like it's jumping um, a little bit out of sync and then we can move through the keyframes here and decide which one we're going to nudge a little to try and smooth out that motion. But in general it's looking pretty good for a, a quick run through. So the next thing to do is to add the, the mask, so to hide the, the eyelid here. Um, and the way that we'll do that is by coming to our effects on the right hand side. We're going to scroll down and we're looking for our masks and for this particular effect we're going to use the draw mask and drag that onto our clip and then once we've added the draw mask um, we'll click done so that we've moved out of the, the transform options and we'll get this option to click to add control points and I'm going to try and keep this simple so the control points are essentially drawing around the area at the top of the eyelid so we don't need to worry too much about the bottom of the eyelid um, because as soon as we've blinked then we're basically hiding the whole video layer anyway. Now for this middle point I've clicked and held so if you're used to working in Illustrator or Photoshop then these Bezier tools will seem quite familiar um, but down at the bottom here we can be quite rough and just move around the outside and you can see now we've modified the top half there so it matches the curve of that uh, eyebrow a little bit. Now the other thing we'll do here as well is just add a little feather in there too um, so that it blends in um, with the background. Now there's two things we can animate here. We can animate the position um, of our mask and we can also add the animate the control points. So we're going to add keyframes for both of these so for the position and the control points and then we'll work through and see which one works best um, for each of these bits of the animation. So I'm going to zoom in again to 200% to do this and we're going to step back first of all. So we'll step back through our animation and we can just make sure that the top of our animation there is matching the curve of the eyebrow. So just some minor adjustments as we move back and we may find we don't need to modify it too much uh, until the eyebrow actually starts to, to close. So we're coming to the point now where the eye is going to close at the beginning and this is where we'll need to animate a bit more and move some of these other control points as well. So we move this down to match the, the closing of the eye. Now this is happening over a few short frames um, so this needs to be good but we can probably get away with quite a lot depending on um, how much motion there is in the rest of our edit so we'll just quickly go through this and make sure that at the beginning here we don't have any of that light showing. That looks pretty good. So there we have our eye opening up and if we now come towards the end of the video we can see where we'll need to modify the position of this mask as well. So you can see at some spots here we've got a little bit of matching up at the top of that eye lid that we need to do. Um, and as I mentioned before we can do this by using the control points or the position. So if we add a quick second keyframe to our position here, we can now move the whole mask down as the eyelid closes. And you can see it's kind of matching the curve there as well at the top. And there might just be one or two spots here where we need to modify the curve of things at the end.
So we'll quickly finish off these last few frames. And that looks pretty good through to the end now. So we'll come back to zoom to fit. We've created a draw mask, we've animated some of the control points and we've also animated the, the position of this for some parts of this and you can play around with which one works best for you. If we deselect this by clicking a different spot up here we can play this through now and you can see we get that nice eye opening at the beginning and then a little bit of movement at the end and that's working pretty well. So obviously there's other refinements we can do in here but as a quick composite video um, over the eyeball that's working nicely. So thanks for watching. If you do have any other questions about Final Cut Pro 10 or suggestions for new tutorials then please do leave a message in the comments below and I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.